Hey everyone, it's a different video format today because, well, the Cosmic Alpha 2 drops today and I just don't have time to do my usual script writing, script recording, editing, recording b-roll and everything kind of process. So, it's a different one. You let me know if you think it's good enough or if you really want me to stick to the previous model. So today we're gonna discuss everything new in the Cosmic Alpha 2 and there is a lot to talk about. But first, we'll talk about our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Proton VPN. You probably all know about it. But if you've never heard about Proton, they provide you with an end-to-end -end encrypted virtual private network accessible on all your devices, whether it's a Linux or a Windows PC, a Mac, a smartphone, and even on Android smart TVs. And Proton has also been working pretty hard to give you more features in Proton VPN. They now have their Stealth Protocol, which is a new way of accessing a VPN that bypasses most firewalls and traditional VPN blocking methods. It basically hides the type of connection you're using to access the VPN, meaning that these connections don't alert internet filters and aren't blocked by the usual methods used by governments. Proton also keeps adding servers in new countries. They now have more than 8,200 servers available worldwide in 112 countries. And they also added a new feature to the Android app that lets you disguise the Proton VPN app by changing its icon to something else. So people controlling your phone or accessing it won't know that the app is installed. Proton VPN is part of your free Proton account that also includes an email address, a calendar, a password manager, online storage space, and more. And if you want better VPN speeds and if you want more features in your Proton plan, they of course have paid plans. The link is in the description. Okay, so first we have a new option in the appearance settings. You could already change the roundness of the interface, which you can mostly see in the dock here. But now you've got the interface density settings, meaning that by default you have the comfortable setting. A lot of people said this was too padded, too big, and I can understand that. Well, now you have an even more padded and big option, which is called spacious probably uh, something more for accessibility or maybe for GNOME users who are used to this kind of padding. But if you want the best screen usage, you now have the compact option, which as you can see also works for the top panel. It just reduces a little bit the margins between each element. It works, uh, as far as I can tell, it doesn't affect the menu bars. Uh, I just couldn't see anything changing in there but it does affect everything else. You have less padding on the sides of the sidebar, less padding between elements. Uh, everything is just a bit smaller. And I think it looks a bit nicer this way, a bit more professional. And I mean, it just uses your screen a lot better. I'm sure this will make a lot of people much happier with Cosmic. I know that if I ever run Cosmic, I'll run it with this compact density because it just looks better to my KD sensibilities. Another option you now have in Cosmic is the scaling of X11 applications. Cosmic runs on Wayland only, as you probably know, but you will at some point probably run an X11 application, like for example, Discord, which is an Electron app. And you can see here at 150% scaling, the Cosmic app is crisp, but this is pretty damn blurry. And now you have the option to either scale all X11 applications through Wayland and X Wayland, but they do appear blurry. They do respect the 150% scaling, but they appear blurry. Or you can render all of them at their native resolution, which is here. And so the application basically tries to scale itself. And if it cannot scale itself, well, at least it renders at a proper resolution. So just so you can check that I'm not inventing this, look at the text here. Welcome back. Pretty crisp. If I move to scaling applications, you see it instantly becomes blurry. You can notice it on the text on the button here as well. It's just a lot nicer this way. Of course, X11 applications that cannot scale themselves will just stay small and won't support the 150% or any other fractional scaling option that you picked. So at least now when an application doesn't scale properly under Wayland, you can blame the applications developers and not the Wayland developers because it's on the app now. Another nice thing is the ability to choose between power profiles. You now have the extended battery life mode, the high performance mode, or the balance mode, which will all affect the CPU scheduler. 
and also, well, the CPU performance, so you will definitely save some battery life with this one, and definitely not save any with this one. And on this screen, you can also see the battery life for connected mice, keyboards, controllers, and stuff like that, but here, of course, uh, it's just a screenshot because I'm recording this in a VM to save some time. Now in the sound settings you also can choose the output and input devices if you have multiple ones plugged in and a specific profile for the audio of every single one of these devices. Audio devices connected to Bluetooth will also show up here uh, which will probably be a much better experience if you want to use Cosmic. Now the network settings have been expanded because you can now check on your wired connections, you can even check on the settings of these connections, although as you can see they use a GTK application here, not a Rust based Cosmic app, uh, you can probably tell these aren't the same exact kind of design. But at least you get all the options that you might want to configure your connections, which is probably a better thing. You can also now manage your VPN connections straight from these settings as well. Of course, I don't have any here, but you have an ad network button to do just that. So this is a bit expanded before the final release. There are other smaller things like more options for the date and time applet here. You can now show the seconds if you want that, uh, but yeah, that, that's about it for the date and time. Now, when using the auto tiling of Pop! OS, you now have two more options, which are focus, follow cursor and cursor, follow focus. So the latter one basically means that if I switch to another window, the mouse cursor will automatically snap to the top left corner, as you can see here, of the window I'm selecting. If I then go instead to the focus follow cursor, it means that the window will just automatically focus when I hover my cursor over the window itself, which means, well, I don't have to click, which is kind of nice. And if we disable the tiling, we also have the ability to disable the use of the super key. Right now it can open the launcher, which is this thing, lets you switch between windows or start new apps. You can open workspaces with the super key, you can open the applications dashboard, or you can now disable it if you don't want to use it, or if you want to use it as a modifier and you don't want to have stuff popping up all over the screen. Personally, I would still use it to open the launcher because that's super practical, but at least you can now customize customize things to your liking. So that's about it for the new settings. There's also a new Bluetooth page that I can't really show you here because I'm on a VM and I don't have a Bluetooth adapter for the VM, but you now have a Bluetooth page to connect to Bluetooth devices, which is nice. There are a lot of improved and added settings in the Alpha 2, which bring Cosmic a bit more in line with what you would expect in terms of what you can do with your desktop environment. But then there are also some improvements to the default applications. Notably, the file manager of Cosmic. Cosmic. This thing was super bare bones in the first alpha, but they added a lot. First, you now have a little search setting, so I can now type something and it's gonna try and find it, so doc for documents. You now have this little search bar here that shows you everything that matches your current search. Now, if I get rid of this and I go back to the home, I also now have the ability to sort things in various ways, so A to Z, Z to A, I can sort with newest first, with oldest first, uh, size as well, smallest to largest, here it doesn't really matter because it's just my home directory. I can also sort by modified, I can sort by size as well, so we have a bunch more options to triage how we're using this. Now the file manager also has a recent area where you can see all the documents that you recently created or opened which is sort of practical as well. Now you also have in the file manager a preview panel built in. This thing is still under active development. It cannot be disabled or enabled just yet in the settings. They added it to get some feedback for the Alpha 3. But it shows you a thumbnail of your image, the ability to put that full screen. Well, it's not really full screen, it's more like full screen in the window itself. Uh, you can also navigate between files if you have multiple ones. You get all the information you want about a specific file and the permissions just as well. You can close it relatively easily. It works with text files as well, image files and a bunch of stuff, but it is not completely full featured. And as I said, there's now this little uh, gallery mode where you can uh, switch between images or just put them full screen inside the file manager, which can be useful from time to time. 
Now, another thing that was missing from the file manager is the ability to compress stuff. So now you have the ability to automatically create an archive with a tar.gz or zip formats. You don't really have support for password encoded zip files, but they will add that at some point. And once you created that archive, you can obviously just extract it and it will immediately extract in the current directory if you want. So that's how things work for the extraction. You also now have a networks uh, places that lets you browse network drives and network folders. You can even add the ones that you might want to navigate to, which is something that's going to be really useful. Nautilus in GNOME actually just added a accessible page for this as well. It was hidden in the other locations here. So that's nice to have in Cosmic as well. Now, another thing that you can do is select a specific folder and press Ctrl plus D. It will add it to your sidebar as an emplacement that you can visit later. Obviously, you can right click it and remove it. I don't think you can add those emplacements with just drag and drop. It doesn't really add them. It's just going to drop them inside of a specific folder. So not sure where this thing went now. I dropped it from the videos folder to the videos folder and it went away. So not fully baked in yet but it, it, it's getting there and also you now have a fully featured file menu in the file manager you can create a new tab new window new folder or file straight from this menu you can open a document or open it with the application of your choice uh, you also have the ability to rename stuff show the preview panel uh, show details it's called add to the sidebar stuff like that so this thing is fully featured now and you have all the options and their keyboard shortcuts uh, that's pretty nice so yeah the file manager in cosmic was super bare bones in the first alpha it is now a bit better but it still needs some time in the oven especially if it wants to compare with something like dolphin on kde uh, which has a bunch of options and plugins and the ability to open a terminal and way more viewing options and customization options but it's getting there it's still an alpha and what they added is pretty nice now also you have the cosmic store that now boots up a lot faster than it did previously you also have a better cpu usage when using all of these little applets up top uh, when you select a specific time zone in the date and time and region and language you will now obviously have this update properly in the uh, little applet up top so things have been improved everywhere and of course there are a lot of under the hood improvements to cosmic itself and the libraries and frameworks that it uses for example the ice d toolkit that they use to build their own applications has been updated they started work on accessibility which is still missing from cosmic right now uh, they fixed problems with x11 or x wayland apps when they were used full screen they could be freezing all the time so now basically cosmic should be better for gaming if you want to do that on the alpha they fixed a bunch of stuff for radio button sizes spacing and padding of the widgets and the buttons probably as they were implementing the compact mode or the spacious mode for their ui and there are tons and tons and tons of bug fixes from the alpha it is still an alpha it's alpha 2 it's not even a beta so there are going to be plenty of bugs in there and i'm sure a lot of stuff will still be broken if you're currently using the alpha 1 you will be able to update it at least if you're using the pop os 24.04 alpha you'll get the update straight in there i'm sure that if you use the alpha 2 on fedora arch or whatever else you'll get the update just as well and so that's about it for this alpha 2 it's still a lot of work and a lot of improvements since the first alpha what was it a month ago a month and a half ago that's a lot of cool work of course there's gonna be an alpha 3 with more stuff and then maybe they'll move to a beta maybe there will be an alpha 4 who knows it all depends on the number of bugs that they find and what they actually want to ship in the final stable version they did say that they want pop os 24.04 to release before the end of this year with cosmic as the default stable desktop so chances are we'll see a final release before december meaning alpha 3 is probably going to release in october a beta in november and the stable release in december that's what i would expect it's not going to be full featured yet but it's still a fascinating desktop 
If only because it is made by a company for their customers, it's going to be the default on laptops and desktops that are sold to consumers. It's not a community project. The focus is going to be on serving these customers. And so it's going to work and function and progress very differently from GNOME, from Mate, from XFCE, from KDE, from any other desktop that we've ever known. And that's why there's so much hype around Cosmic. Some people will naysay around it, say, oh, it's overhyped, people are shills or whatever. But these people simply do not understand how different this is compared to the current ecosystem of Linux desktops. People aren't excited about Cosmic because it's so much better and because it's gonna be amazing and the next best desktop. They're excited because it's another way of building a desktop that isn't specifically community focused first and that's going to change a lot of stuff. Anyway, I'll stop rambling about this. I hope you enjoyed this little format of video. If you did, let me know in the comments. If you didn't, let me know as well and I'll adapt uh, in the future to see if I keep the previous format or if this one works for you.